Anyway, this story starts like a lot of great stories do with me accidentally typing my name into Google. <laughs> and inadvertently pressing search. And I discovered that there was another John Ronson on Twitter. And his Twitter name was John underscore Ronson. And his picture was a picture of my face. <laughs> and as I looked in surprise at his timeline, uh, he tweeted, going home, got to get the recipe for a huge plate of mussel and guana in a bap with mayonnaise, hashtag yummy. <laughs> Who are you? I tweeted him. Watching Seinfeld would love a delicious plate of lemongrass stew, hashtag foodie, he wrote. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> the next morning, I checked the other John Ronson's Twitter feed before I checked my own. In the night, he tweeted, I'm dreaming something about time and cock. <laughs> he had 20 followers. Uh, some of them were people that I knew from real life. who were presumably wondering why I'd suddenly become so passionate about fusion cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and also candid about dreaming about cock. <laughs> so I did some digging and I discovered that it was a spam bot created by an academic from the University of Warwick called Luke Robert Mason. And I thought, oh, well, this is fine. I'll, I'll email him and I'll tell him that I don't like the spam bot and he'll take it down. So I emailed him and I said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you take down your spam bot, please? And he emailed back, we prefer the term infomorph to spam bot. <laughs> so I wrote, but it's taken my identity. And he replied, the infomorph isn't taking your identity repurposing social media data into an infomorphic aesthetic. <laughs> I felt a tightness in my chest. <laughs> I was at war with a robot version of myself. <laughs> a month passed, and the other John Ronson was tweeting about 30 times a day about his soirees. The other John Ronson, I should say, was having a much better life than I was having. Um, in the entire period, I was only invited to one thing that would be called a soiree. And as I turned up, the host said to me, would you like some potato chips? And I said, no, thank you. I'm going to have cereal when I get home. <laughs> so I, I, I saw out of the corner of my eye my, my wife was glaring at me and mouthing something. And I said, what? And she mouthed, be more general. <laughs> said, Your small talk, make it more general. <laughs> it, it was just basic small talk as far as I understand the concept. Anyway, I emailed Luke Robert Mason and I said, well, if you won't take down your spam bot, maybe we can meet uh, and, and I can film the encounter and put it onto YouTube and you can explain your uh, reasons for creating the spam bot and I can explain why I don't like the spam bot. And he wrote me back to say, we would very much like to meet you to explain our reasons behind the infomorph. And I said, that's great. I'm very much looking forward to hearing your reasons behind the spam bot. <laughs> So I rented a room in central London and three of them turned up and they were all academics. Um, and I asked them all to sit in a, in a row on a sofa so I could film them all in a single shot. And one of them said, okay, we'll play along, but we know what you're doing. It's a form of psychological control. <laughs> and I said, 
is it? <laughs> and he said, I do it to my students. I sit them in a row and I sit in a chair separately. And I said, why would you want to psychologically control your students? And he looked briefly worried that I'd caught him saying something eerie. Um, <laughs> And he said, it's about controlling the learning environment. And I said, well, I'm not trying to psychologically control you. But actually, now I think back on it, I think I kind of was. Uh, anyway, so he said, um, do you want to go through the London phone book and tell everybody in the phone book called John Ronson that they're not allowed to be called John Ronson? And I said, no, because those people aren't called John Ronson because of me, whereas you're calling the spam bot John Ronson because of me. And he said, well... Uh, you're proposing yourself as the real John Ronson. <laughs> and we feel annoyed with you because <laughs> we feel that what you're really doing is brand management. <laughs> and I said, it's just me tweeting. <laughs> and... Um, I said, my problem is that, you know, if it was like porn or fraud, it would be okay. But this, <laughs> it's, it's plausible and it's an idiot. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like a misrepresentation of me. And he said, would you like it to be more like you? And I said, no, I'd like it to not exist. And he said, well, I find that disturbing. Uh, because you want to kill these algorithms, you must feel threatened in some way. So I said, you're a troll! <laughs> and then I staggered out into the London afternoon and I, I dreaded uploading the footage because I'd been so screechy. Uh, um, and I didn't want YouTube comments mocking my screechiness. <laughs> Uh, so, but I posted it and I left it 10 minutes and then with some apprehension I had a look and the first comment said these people should respect John's personal liberty and I thought wow and then the second comment said vile disturbing idiots playing with the man's hurt and anger and then laughing at his pain <laughs> and I nodded soberly and then the third comment said, break them, fuck them, destroy them. <laughs> and I was, I was giddy with joy. I was, uh, I was like Braveheart, <laughs> wandering through a field at first alone. And then I realized that hundreds are marching behind me. And then the next comment said, if I could see these people face to face, I would say that they are pricks. The cunt in the middle is a fucking psychopath. <laughs> and I thought, I hope nobody's going to actually hurt them. <laughs> and then the next message said, gas them. <laughs> and I, I won. The academics were shamed into acquiescence. And uh, it was like their public shaming had set a factory restore button and everything went back to normal and it was a wonderful feeling the feeling of victory I felt like um, I felt I felt overwhelmed with this good feeling like a sedative uh, and they shut down the spam bot and they made a big deal out of it they tweeted it and said you know I'm afraid that um, we're gonna have to close you down now do you know what that means and then they said you only have a few hours left I hope you I hope you choose how to spend them wisely. I hope you had a happy life. And I emailed said, just turn it off, Jesus. <laughs> um, it felt great to be victorious. But as I stood over the corpse of the spam bot, I suddenly thought to myself, were we doing to them what they were doing to me? Were we turning them into something that wasn't quite human. And then I thought, were we the people in the lithographs being ribald at whippings? And then I thought, maybe what's going on here is that there's an escalation in the war on human floors. And we're soldiers in that war.
because we just don't like it when somebody's not normal. And then I was thinking, well, maybe what we're saying here is that we are normal and this is the average. Maybe what we're doing is defining the boundaries of normality by becoming furious and tearing apart the people outside of it. Thank you. <laughs>